And that's fantastic. I can see it. Can you see it? I can see Marvellous. Hello, good evening and welcome everybody. And tonight we're looking at Cooler Colour with Adobe Cooler. For those who don't know me, I'm Elaine Giles. I've been a trainer for more years than I care to admit publicly. Currently, I present the Matt Bites podcast and I am also the user group manager of the Northwest Adobe user group in the UK. We are an official Adobe user group. So we have lots of people with us because Adobe have been tweeting our events. So uh, welcome to all those people. But enough of me, but let's get back to the topic of the night. You may have heard of Cooler before. If you have, let me know in the chat. Have you used it? Have you heard of it? It actually goes back to November 2006, which isn't long after I moved to the Mac. But today it's much more than that basic colour service that it was back then. There is still the core service, which is the web service, and that's the central hub of Cooler's expanded range of services. So over the years, it's changed, but still recognisable as being at the, the Cooler service of old. But what's new? Well, now there is app integration. So some apps have built in support for Cooler colour themes. Now, the two that I've got up there, Photoshop and Illustrator, they both have quite integrated uh, integration, as it were. But contrary to popular opinion, it isn't a crisis if an app doesn't have native support. As we will see, I will show you a workaround for apps that don't have native support. And at, at, at the moment, not all Adobe apps have integration. So it isn't just third party apps, but the workaround that I've got works with any application. So I will show you that. There's also the Cooler community, and there is quite a big Cooler community there. Um, it involves the ratings of colour schemes. There's a whole system of commenting. There is sharing enabled where you can share themes from other people and you can also share your own themes with other people. And there's also some really good forums there for if you have problems or if you're looking for ideas and inspiration. So there is a whole range of services for this. In addition to that, there is an application for iOS. So that was launched in May last year and it is awesome. It's an amazing app, um, very, very popular. So it did kind of reinvigorate the whole cooler service. The fact that it's actually on your iOS device. Now, sadly, no native Android app. But if you do have an Android device, and I have two Android devices, you are not left out of the cooler party. I'll be showing you how you can get around that lack of an application as the last demo. And talking of demos, let's head off and actually have a look at Cooler. So I need a browser. The first browser I'm going to show you is Safari. And the reason that I'm going in here and showing it you in this browser, although it is supported virtually across the board, is that the first thing to be aware of to get the full experience with Cooler, you don't actually need an Adobe account. But to get that full experience, I would recommend that you get an Adobe account. So over in the top right hand corner, we have a sign up and sign in. So if you do have an Adobe ID, you can sign in with it. If you don't, then that's where you would sign up for an ID. And although you're signing up for it via the Cooler site, it is a global Adobe ID. Now, why it's a good idea to have one is that if you are thinking of Creative Cloud, the way that Creative Cloud works now as a native subscription service is that it's tied to an Adobe ID. So over the years, you may have got more than one Adobe ID. You may have had a Macromedia ID and that also was translated to an Adobe ID. So pick one of your Adobe IDs and uh, your Adobe IDs and stick with it because there is a synchronization system going on here and it really needs a single account to make it work properly. So that is what you need, a free Adobe ID. And when you have got your free Adobe ID, uh, I'm going over to a different browser where I am logged in, then you will see that you are logged in at the top. So I am logged in there with my primary Adobe ID. The interface doesn't change at all when you log in, apart from that little bit in the top right hand corner. But as we move through Cooler, there you will see things that you wouldn't see if you weren't logged in. So this is it. This is Cooler. This is the Cooler web service. This is the page you're greeted with, which straight away you can jump in and make a colour theme if you would like to do that. But I'm going to show you around first. So this is the editor. You can edit with the colour wheel. You also have colour rules. The save button is to be used when you've created your uh, colour scheme. 
You can also rename your color scheme. So just clicking in there once and then you can then give a name to your color scheme. Be aware, it does need a certain minimum number of characters. Uh, today I tried creating one with just two characters and it didn't like it at all. So I ended up with several called My Cooler Theme. So that's where you edit that. And these are the color rules that you have down here. I'm going to go through all of these, but just at the moment going over the interface. Underneath the color wheel, you have the five color areas that will form your cooler theme. One of them will be designated the base colour. So at the moment, as I hover over that white triangle, it's saying that that colour in the middle is the base colour. Now, the base colour is really important. That's the one that it will use to generate the other four colours from, according to the colour rules that are over on the left hand side. So if I just show you that, if I choose monochromatic, what it's going to do is it's going to use the base colour to generate four other colours, all of which are derived from that base colour. So if I choose this as the base colour and then change it to a different one, change it back, I get a whole different range of colours. And that is how you change that base colour. You hover over the triangles, over the lower half of the square there, and choose to set a base colour. So that's what those larger squares are. They are actually forming the elements within your colour scheme. Underneath that, there are a lot of sliders and these also are interactive. So you can use this to change the colors in there. So make it much, much cooler, make it bluer. So they are active. The lower one of these is the brightness. So you can take that right down as well. So keep within the same color range, but just make it much lighter or much darker at the bottom. And what is also happening as you're doing this is down in this area here, it's generating the RGB and the hex values for you. So if you're using this in CSS, where you need numbers to refer to colors rather than picking up a color swatch, all of that is down there. In fact, if I click on that disclosure triangle, you also have all the others. So if you need to work in CMYK for print production, you can do that. There's also lab color and HSB color as well. So all of those are available for you in there. Let's fold that up. So that is the interface. Now let's get to work with it and create a color scheme. So first of all, creating a color scheme, I'm going to turn it back to the default, which is that top one there. And what happens in here is, as I say, one will be the base color. So I'm going to put the base color back to the middle. And that's also indicated up here. So if I just show you that, you also have that triangle over that to show you that that is the base color. And you can click and pick up a color up there and move it up there. So rather than use the sliders, you can actually use that color wheel to create your color theme. So, oh dear, a little bit too bright. But if you like that particular color and what you would like to work with, because cool is fantastic for design work, it's great for web work, it's great for presentations. If you're looking for complementary colors for your presentations, works well for that then pick your base color and then work through the color rules. So all of these are similar-ish colors. As we move on to monochromatic, it's taking the pink and it's giving you five different shades of pink there. And as you change one of them, so I'm changing this one here, then the whole lot will change. And it's all working, it's in a line if you see that, it's working along the range of colors. So it's all based on a similar shade, but varying shades of light and dark of that particular color. The color rules are what makes this very different. If I now change that to triad, what triad is giving you is three points on the color wheel. And as I move this in and out, they're all moving in tandem. They are all moving together. And as I turn it around, I'm getting colors that are the same distance apart, but starting from a different position on the color wheel. So they are, you've got opposites in there and you've got complements in there as well as you move them around. And then you have a whole complementary section. So these are very different colors. So I've got some blues in there. I've got some orangey, orangey browns in there. They are opposite each other on the color wheel. So as I move the blue round, if I move the blue round to a purple, 
It's moving the others equally. So they are the opposite of the color wheel. Can drag these in and out so I can change them to be much lighter. And they are independent to some degree, as you can see. They are all moving when I move that green. But if I move one of the other greens, then they don't all move. The reason they all move when I use this one is that that is the base colour. So it's changing them to give me that range of complementary colours. Then I can choose compound. So as I'm moving around there, you can see it's again keeping them relatively the same distance, but the colours are changing radically. And if I change any of these independently down here, that will also be reflected in the colour wheel. So if I go across to this one here and think, no, it's too purpley to take it back a bit. As I change that one, all of the others are changing. So the whole thing, the whole interface is wired up together that you change one element and it, that change is reflected in all of the other elements of the interface. Then there is another colour rule, which is shades. So this time they are all shades of a blue. If I move this round here, you pick one colour and it gives you a range of shades based on the colour that you pick. So just dragging that round and showing you that. So if you know that you have a particular colour maybe that a client needs to work with or you're trying to match it to something else, if you make that the base colour, and you think, I don't know what goes well with that, then work through the colour rules and they should give you a nice complementary range of colours, be they shades of a single colour or very, very different colours at the opposite end of the colour wheel. But it saves you doing the work on it. And the last option that you have in there for colour rules is custom. And what this one will do is just allow you to have complete control over each individual point. So as I change from the one on the left to the next one in, I can move that round. And literally, as I keep working through these, I'm getting extra handles that I can work with. Now, custom's great if you know what you're doing or you know what colours you want to work with and you're only trying to pick one or two colours. But it's easy to go hideously wrong where the, where the colours just don't complement each other at all. So in this circumstance, let's say I need to work with this blue. If I make that the base colour and then go back to shades, it will give me a nice range of blues to work with based on that blue. So if that is the client's shade of blue, then immediately I get four more shades of blue that go very nicely with it. Now at that stage I've got my blues and I quite like that. So first thing to do as soon as I'm happy with it is to save that. But as I say it's always a good idea to give it a name. So clicking once in there and you can name that. Now I'm going to name this NWAG Blue and there will be a reason for that. I want you to be able to find it. So at the moment I've set, I've named it. Next step is to save it. And saving it takes you into this view, which shows you just the five colours that you have there. Now, clicking on that takes you into the exploded view where you have just your colours in the browser window. So it gives you a big preview of that. Uh, one tip you could use there is to uh, take a screenshot of that and then you can use that in any application. And that's not the workaround that I had for apps that didn't support it. That's an extra tip. So clicking on there takes you back to this view. And in here, it's saved at this point. You can add your own comments to it and you have a whole range of options over on the right hand side. So at the moment and by default, all your colour themes are private. Well, it's not going to be a good demo if you can't see these in Cooler, is it? So I'm going to choose to make that public. So that has made that colour public. Hopefully, if you went to search for NWAG Blue, you would find it. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to go off and have a look for that while I talk through the rest of it. Now, one of the actions I've got is I could make that a favourite of mine. Now, I'll talk more about favourites when I look at other people's colours. The other thing I might want to do with it is edit it slightly. So I can go back into my edit view here if I want to and actually elect to edit that. But I'm not going to make any changes. So I'll just say save changes rather than make a copy of it. But that's how you edit it. Now, the other thing I can do is actually copy a link. So that has copied a link to that colour theme. So to help you along, if you're not, if you haven't managed to find it, I'll put that into the connect chat and I'll get Mike to put it into um, a comment on the YouTube stream. And that's how you create a link to it. So you can share it with people by giving them the link to it. The other thing that you can elect to do is to actually download it.
So when you download it, so just go over here and click the download button, it actually downloads an Adobe Swatch Exchange file. So what that is, that will allow you to import it into applications, any applications that support the Adobe Swatch Exchange format. And we'll be coming to look on that shortly. For the moment, I'm going to click on there. And uh, oh dear, it's opened it up in Illustrator. That's not what I wanted. I wanted to see it in, in the um, filing system. But I will um, tell Illustrator to go away and we will look at that shortly. Right, the other thing I can do is delete a colour theme. So if you've made a colour theme and uh, you don't want it anymore, then you can just delete it there. You can also report abuse. Now, because these options um, are global here, I wouldn't have a delete option if this was somebody else's colour theme. But if it's not relevant to me, so for instance, I'm not logged in or it's not my colour theme, then the delete option won't be there. But report abuse will be. And um, that's when... Well, I have seen people do rather strange things with colour themes. So um, if, they, if you do find one that you need to report abuse, that's how you do that. Then you have your information underneath. So who created it? Now, this one I've got a bit of a problem with. I have set uh, my username to be Elaine or Elaine Giles everywhere I can. And nowhere can I seem to change that from Elaine G. So uh, I will have to carry on working with that. I'm assuming it's got that from my email address. But uh, I am, I have set my Adobe ID up to be Elaine or Elaine Giles and still it's not having it. But that uh, does show you where, who created it. And that's important because you have a user ID. So if you look down at the lower right, uh, lower left hand corner of your screen, you'll see it says cooler.adobe.com slash user ID and there's a number. And that user ID, it's a bit strange to do it this way, but it, it's unique to you. The, un the user ID is unique to you and it can be used in the searching. So we'll come on to that shortly, but that's where you would find your user ID. It's got the date it was created, how many times it was viewed, and you can rate it as well. Well, I think it's fabulous. Sadly, I can't rate my own, but uh, you can go in and you can rate that and uh, also favourite it. Now, if you would like to help people find your colour theme, then it's a good idea to tag it. And tagging works in exactly the same way as you will see in other applications. So if you're familiar with tagging in iPhoto or any other application that uses tags, then this works in a very similar way. So I would be putting in here blue as it's mainly blues. I could put in something like Seaside. And what you're really doing when you're tagging is thinking, what when would I like this to return to people in the search results? What would I want them to look for and have my colour theme come up? Now, obviously, you can cheat, but that's when people may report abuse. So I would stick to things that do make sense with that. Um, sky is something that would make sense with it being blue, especially given that when people search, they're searching two things. They're searching the name of the colour theme, which was NWAG Blue, but they can also search the tags because if they want blues for a sky, they wouldn't find my theme based on the name of it. So that's where the tags come into their own. So I've put some tags on it there too. Now, has anybody found it yet? Got any notes that anybody has found it? No, no, not hearing anybody's found it yet. Nor am I seeing anybody's uh, viewed it, but I shall leave you to that. Right, so that is that colour scheme. So I'm going to go back to the home page of Cooler and straight away it takes me back to exactly the same colours I had when I first loaded it. So it's given me a new blank theme to start with and I could go through the process again. But if what you're looking for is less creating your own theme, you're looking for inspiration from somebody else, then what you can do is you can explore Cooler. And this is where the community aspect of it comes in. So the second option at the top is to explore Adobe Cooler. And this takes me in to a view of everybody's colours. And there's mine at the top, NWAG Blue at the top. And what I'm looking at here is all themes at the moment. So the search options are available from the top left. Uh, it's set to all themes at the moment. You could choose most popular. So I'm clicking on there. These were the most popular for the month, but you can change that to the week. So these really are r the most popular right at the moment. So I'm thinking that it will be Christmassy. It will be, um, oh, bad weather, I'd have thought. See, the top one is snowman. So that, that makes sense. And you can search of the most popular of all time. 
So uh, they look like very good website themes to me. So I think that people are, are doing lots of searches for that. You can also choose the most used and again, do that by week, by month or by all time. You can also, if you're just thinking, I just want some colours and I've no idea where to start, you can choose random for that and it will go through and it's actually doing this live. It's searching through and just randomising those right now, which is why it's taking a few seconds to load in. And would you look at that? My favourite colour, not pink is number one. There you go. There's lots of pinks in there. So with these colour themes here, if I wanted that pink one, I like that pink so much, I'd like to work with that, then this is how I do it. As I hover over the miniature thumbnails of the colours, there are things that I can do. So the first one is info. And when I go into that, it takes me into that view that I had before. But if you notice on the right, as I said, this isn't my colour scheme. So the delete button isn't there. So that's why it's missing. So that's the, well, that's what I can do from there. Let me go back and uh, yeah, still there. That's good. I can choose to edit this. Now, you might be scared at that and think, but it's not my theme. What it will do is it will make a copy for you. And you can then save that to your colour themes and you can tweak it. You can edit it a bit. You could also copy that link. So if I click copy link and I put that back in the chat, then you can get there as well. So pasting that in. Right, so we've got the three options there. So copy the link. The next option is to download it. So even though it's not mine, I didn't create it, I can still download that. Now, I can only download other people's themes where they've made them public. In fact, I can only see other people's themes when they've made them public. So that might be something that you want to consider before you decide whether you want to make your themes public or not. But I'm going to download that and we, we can have a look at that later. And another option you have is actually to favourite a theme. Now, if you favourite a theme, that will then appear for you when you're looking at your themes. So I'm going to favourite that theme. Oh, the first time it's been favourited. There you go. Pink Ribbons is now favourited. And I can carry on working with that when I work with my themes. Now, that's just browsing them. It's just exploring them. It's not actually searching for something specific. So you might have a job to do where you know the kind of colours you want. They need to be like a fairground or a circus or the seaside or lipsticks, something like that. And you you know that that's what it, the, the colours, you'll know them when you see them is what I get told a lot. Or you can use a search box for that. So within the search box there, if I put in Seaside, it will go away and it will search both the name of the theme and the tags of the theme. And when it's finished its search, which usually takes sort of about 10 to 12 seconds, it will come back. And you see I've got lots that are called Seaside. Some of them more relevant than others, I would have thought. I'd be looking for something quite bright, but with a blue in it, maybe, and sort of a sandy colour as well. So as I look through these, this one's very Mediterranean. So that, that's the kind of thing I'd use on a website, maybe dedicated to holiday lets or something like that. So I'm going to favourite that one and uh, that will appear later when uh, I come to look at my themes. So as you can see, lots and lots there. And although they're very different, you can discern a theme with them that there are blues, there are oranges. So definitely seasidey. So that's searching through them. Now, some people call these things logical names like Seaside Beach or Seaside Adventure, Seaside Friends. Some don't. I call mine NWAG Blue. So if, if you were looking for sky colours, you wouldn't find it. So you can restrict your search by using um, keywords and those keywords are tags. So you can limit them by tag. You can limit them by um, username. Well, user ID, not username, user ID. Or you can limit it to a title. So if I put in tag and then colon and put in seaside, and hopefully this will work. Obviously, this is happening live. What I want to see returned, uh, and I'm getting them, so that's good, are themes where the, the word seaside is not in the title. So Expanse, Island, Scarborough Beach, they don't have the word seaside in the title. But if I wanted to limit it to ones that did have it in the title, then I just change that word tag. So at the moment there, it's tag colon. I would change that to title colon and redo the search. So 
you can do that. You can also put in there user IDs. And uh, that's why you need to know your user ID, but it isn't very user friendly. To use that, you'd have to go and find somebody's profile and then find their user ID, which, as I've said, is just a random string of numbers. So it can be done, but it could be a little bit more friendly. Right. So that's the explore section. The third option here is my themes. So I'm going to go into my themes and there's quite a lot of them. I've been um, happily creating themes for quite a while. And uh, some of them have names, some of them don't have names. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of them. Not many of them are public. So not many at all are public. But just to show you how to work with them, I'm going to make this one called Andy Blues um, public. So I'm going to go into the info of it and across on the right, you can see it's private and very simple to make it public. Just click on there. So now Andy Blues is public and um, I haven't put any tags in. I could put in there blues again or blue and blues and sky and anything else that, that made sense with that particular range of colours. I'll put in there NWAG as well and uh, maybe you'll be able to find it by that. So that is how you work with your own colour schemes. Now, where did all these colour schemes come from? Well, I certainly didn't sit um, in front of my web browser and work with them in there. No, I didn't. There are more ways to create themes than sitting in front of your web browser and randomly dragging around those um, pointers that you have in here. So first thing that you can do, I need my uh, file system. So where's my files? I've got some data here and I've got uh, some files in it. What you can do is you can move over to this icon, which looks innocuous sat up there doing not much. It doesn't even say anything. But if I click it, it will say create from image. And what I'm hoping that will allow me to do is to upload an image and then have um, a cooler analyze that image. So I'm going into there. And I've got my data in here. So I have a range of posters. So I'm going to go for my Adobe Ideas poster and I'm going to open that. And it very quickly uploads. So you can see how fast that was. That's the image. And it this is a different way to create a colour scheme. Instead of having a colour wheel, it's now looked at that image and it has picked these five colours, which has done a pretty good job, actually. But if I wanted to change them slightly, couple of things I can do. I can click on here and move that round and that gives me a zoom view as well. So if I wanted to pick up a grey from over here, I can actually zoom over that and get just the grey I want. You can also choose in here and it will highlight the point on the image. So this one is very orange down there. That's more yellowy at the top. If I go back to that one and drag that up so it's a very pale yellow, I can do that as well. Now, at the moment, that is set in the colour mood to be custom. And the reason it's set to custom is that it's allowing me to move these points and make my own decisions about each and every colour in there. Now, I'm going to make this orange one. I'm going to, have to highlight that orange one. And if I come into here, the colour mood, I can change the mood of that. So if I choose it to go to colourful or bright or muted, you can see it's giving me a different mood from the same image. So this one's much, much darker. That one's dark as well. So it's just picked up the one bright colour. So I think colourful is quite nice. I like that one. And it's even given me a name and it's taken that name from the name of the file. So the file was called adobeideas.png and that is the name that it has uh, given itself up there. So I will leave that set to Adobe Ideas and save that theme. Again, it takes me through to this detailed view for this theme. And at the moment it's private. So the first thing for me to do is to make it public. And again, I've got all the same options. I can edit it. I can copy the link. So I've got the link for that one. I shall paste that one in as well. So going over to my chat window and pasting that one in. Yep, I think that one's gone through. And I can put in my important tag information. So I don't think it would make sense, given that it's called Adobe Ideas, to be putting Adobe Ideas in here. But blue figured highly, orange figured highly. Um, I might want to put bright. Uh, or whatever else you would think appropriate for something like that. So do take the time and tag them. 
So there we go. That is another way to create a theme. So we've had the color wheel and we've actually had uploading it as well. So I'm going back in there to the create, which is also where you would get if you clicked on the home button, which is the Adobe cooler bit there. Now, when it came to exporting, um, I said that it exported as Adobe Swatch files and it does. And I'm just going to show you this Swatch file here. So show it in the finder and it's opened it up on the other window. But there it is. I'll stick it in, in that file there and show you. So just putting it in my data folder so I can show it to you. And there it is. That is the file. And if I highlight that and press the space bar because I have an application installed that gives me a preview it actually previews that and the colors that were in that pink ribbons were the five shades of pink and I've got that white one at the corner because Adobe Swatch files, Swatch Exchange files can have more than five colors in them. They can have a whole range of colors in them so that's why I've got that white one there as well. So that's what you get when you download it. I will be looking shortly at what you can actually do with that when you You've downloaded it. Now we've looked at rating it when we looked at commenting. Um, there are also forums dedicated to Cooler. So uh, if I go in here, I've got lots of things in there, but uh, I'm going to put Cooler Forums and it should take you there. There we go, the FAQs and the forums. There we are. Great place to ask questions if you've got questions, because you will find that the people who work on developing Cooler will be in these forums to actually answer the questions for you. So there, are, it's quite a busy forum. I've been checking it out over the last few weeks and it is fairly busy. It's also a good place to go for the FAQs about Cooler. So if you want to use the Cooler API or you've got other apps and it's not working quite right, you can go in there and have a look at the FAQs and it's great help in there. OK, now let's have a look at how else you can create your cooler themes. And the most obvious way to do that is with the iOS app. So I'm going to attempt to let you see my uh, my iPod touch. So I'm uh, attempting to share it with you. And with a bit of luck, you will be seeing it. There we are. Now I'm going to get rid of this. So we've got a plain background to work on. Uh, what are you screaming about? That's Illustrator. We'll lose that for the moment and go back in here to my iPod Touch. So Cooler is available from the Mac App Store. It is free of charge and it's a fantastic app. So first thing to do, open Cooler. If this is the first time you have opened Cooler, it will ask you to log in. Now, I've already done that, fallen like that before in demos where it requests I log in. This is where you put your information in in my account. And you also have preferences in here where you can uh, reset the settings, where you save your images to and whether you allow usage tracking, which I don't. Got enough. You know, poor thing's got enough to do in a demo without tracking usage. So once you've logged in, uh, you will have access to your cooler themes. This is why it's important to have that single account. And they are the same themes as we've seen in my account within the browser. So they are the identical themes. So I'm going to go up to the top here. In fact, it's even managed to synchronize it. And uh, those top three are the ones that I've just created. So I'm going to click on that once and you can see there's the Adobe Ideas theme. And I can choose to edit that in here if I want to by tapping on the first button, which takes me into this view. And in here, all I've got to do to make changes to that is use these sliders. So move the sliders up and down, having selected the color that I want to change. So make changes like that. If I want to change that blue one on the left, select that and move that up, choose a different color. Now, at the moment, it's letting me do that. That now doesn't look as good as it did before because down here I've got it set to custom. So in the lower right hand corner, you have those color modes. So if I wanted shades of that um, purpley color, there we go. So I have chosen down there shades. I can choose the triad and get the different colors. And the monochromatic will give me lots more blues so I can make all those changes in there. Now, if you I'm actually at the moment editing that particular color 
that's the slider way of editing it. But on the right hand side, just underneath the blue, so I'll use my mouse pointer to show it to you, there, and now I'm that one there. If I tap on that, it gives me a different way to edit it, which is the color wheel. So very similar as to the web interface and a really great implementation because as I drag that round, so I'm dragging around the pointer to pick up a single point and we'll have greens there. There is also another option on that wheel. Not only can I drag and drop those points about within the color wheel, but right around the edge of the color wheel, so right around the edge here, I've got various shades and that allows me to change the brightness of that. So I can drag that round like unlocking a safe. There we go, I can move that round and completely change the tone of the color that I have at the top. Now, if you want to save that, you hit the plus at the bottom, the tick, and if you don't, then you hit the cross. So I'm not going to save that and come out because that was my Adobe Ideas and it was meant to be blue. So that's what the first button there does. The second one is the info icon. And as I go into there, it's got the name, it's got whether it's public or not. So I, if I've decided I don't want it to be public anymore, I can take that down to be private. I can also put more tags in. So you really can access and utilize Cooler on the road with this app. It gives you virtually the same features, just in a, in a very different interface. And then save the changes when you're done. Now, that's working with the color themes that are there. But what if you want to create a color theme? Well, you can do that as well with what's known as live camera view. So um, let's tap on that camera and it activates the camera. And what you've got there is my screen in front of me. And oh, we've got that infinity effect, haven't we? But I tell you what I'll do. I'll take it over to something else. Let's have a look at how I'm broadcasting to YouTube. There we go. There's what I'm broadcasting to YouTube right at the moment. All of my windows there. And it's picked up some nice colours there. Now, a couple of things you can do here. Obviously, if you like that particular colour, so I'm moving it around, then you can just hit the, the tick button at the bottom. But I wanted some purple in that and it's not picking up purple. So if I tap the image once, it freezes the image. And now I've got the uh, iPod touch in front of me and I can click and drag. So just tapping and dragging and it's letting me choose what precise colors that I want there. So just dragging these over, picking up some very different colours from my screen just by dragging these about. So happier with that, that looks better. And at that point, if I tap that image again, then what that will do is unfreeze it and it will bounce around and it will pick the colours. But I don't want it to do that. I want it to save that as it is. So I'm going to hit that tick at the bottom and it says theme 20. So I'm going to go into there. We don't want theme 20. We'll call that YouTube. That was my broadcast software broadcasting to YouTube. So I'll call that YouTube colors. There we go. And put some tags in. Well, I could put YouTube, but it wouldn't really make much sense, was it? would it? So uh, how about blue and pink and purple? There we go. And importantly, very importantly, I would need to make that public if you're going to see it and then save the changes. So if you have got one of my color schemes on your screen now and you click on my user ID, then that YouTube colors should be with you any time now. Now back up here, I'm onto my third button, which is this one, which is my share button. If I tap on there, I can tweet it. I can email the link or I can cancel. Now, really what I should do is tweet it, shouldn't I? Let's see how that works. Right, check out YouTube colours on Adobe Cooler from my account with, with no location. That'll work nicely. So I'll post that. People on Twitter will think I've gone mad. And it even whistled and said it had tweeted it for me. So if you follow me on Twitter, that is out there. You can go click it from there. So what you've got in this app is complete cooler management. It's synchronised, which is critical. And it's using that Adobe ID to do that. You can also, if you would like, load in a picture and get it to do it that way. But that is what you've got with the iOS app. And there's Mike retweeting me and you can see Boxcar going crazy about that. <laughs> I put this on Do Not Disturb and it's totally ignoring me. 
<laughs> oh dear. Right. Well, there you go. So Cooler app, free of charge, absolutely critical if you've got an iOS app. It really does really make you use it more, to be honest. Um, I, I had it originally and once I could do once I could do pictures with it, awesome. It's amazing if you go visit a client to just show them and it gets them excited about colours rather than just, yeah, yeah, whatever, use what you like. It does. It really energises them that you're walking around the office taking photos and using cooler to pick a colour scheme for them. It completely engages them. So a great use of tech when it comes to engaging people. So I'm going to put that one down and I'm going to move on. Oh, and that happens if it goes sideways. There you go. A little extra tip for you. If you hold it sideways, you get that view, which, of course, you could take a screenshot of and then you've got an archive that you could send to somebody. So another way of working with it. But right for now, I'm uh, going to lose that. There we go. Because I said it's all right if you've got iOS, but it's not great if you've got an Android. But it's doable. She said, hopefully, as she juggled with a whole lot more kit. Right. So what I'm now doing is I'm turning my Android on and then you need to see my Android. So I, ha I have an app for that. I do. Here is my app. And uh, can I make that bigger? Oh, you'll let me make it a little bit bigger. That's very good of you. There we go. There is my Nexus 7. And what I've done is I've opened up Google Chrome on my Nexus and I've gone to the Cooler website and it's completely responsive. It works in exactly the same way on an Android as it does on a desktop. So anything that you can do on the desktop, you can do on the Android. So excuse my fingers as I go in and uh, make a different colour scheme there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that exposure down a little bit so you can see it properly because it's very bright in the middle. There we go. So I'll uh, make an Android colour. Android should really have green in it somewhere, shouldn't it? Oh dear, that's hideous. Right, I need to choose a different colour rule here. So as I said, I promised it was the same. I'll make it complimentary. Uh, I'm having a job here working left-handed. Oh, well, compound will do. Whatever you think best. There we go. So I have a colour scheme. So cooler scheme, my cooler scheme at the top. Now it needs to be brighter, but I'm calling this Android. So you know where it was created. There we go, Android. I haven't got the D. There's the D. OK, save that. I now have my colour scheme. It's taken me to exactly the same page and I can use that to make it public. So that colour scheme should now be public. But it gets better than that because that's just using the browser, isn't it? So I'm going to go back to the cooler homepage and I might need my trusty assistant in a moment. But it's an Android device. It's a Nexus 7 and it has a camera on it. But can Google Chrome talk to the camera on my Android device? Yes, it can. It can talk to all sorts. It can talk to the camera, which is Android system. And it can also talk to the documents. So if I had a saved image, it could talk to that as well. It would upload that image. But I want to go for Android system. And with it being an Android, it doesn't limit me to the built-in apps. So I have two apps that can take photos. I've got the built-in one, which is the camera, and I've got another one called a better camera. And I get to choose. I even get to remap it permanently if I want. But I'm going to go for camera, which is the bottom one. And on comes the camera. And what you can see there is um, I've got this very precariously positioned on my desk. But if I bring that in, there's my dictaphone that lives in my desk drawer. So not very exciting, but it's a picture. So I'm going to tap the blue button and it will take the image. And what's happening now is it's letting me choose that. It's saying, are you sure you want that image? And I do want that image. So click the tick or tap the tick and it is uploading it and it's going through exactly the same process. And you're not seeing that too well on there. Let me change that to exposure so we can see it better. That is much better. There's the image that it's taken and I get to do all the things that I can do in the iOS app. So I'm hovering over a point and I'm moving it, hovering over another point, taking that over to the red area. Uh, where's the red area? Up a bit. There we go. Got the red. So I can work on that it's not quite as elegant as the iOS application, but feature wise, it's all there. So I'm going to tap on the name of that up there. And um, this one was uh, my voice recorder. 
So let me put voice tracer, I think it's called. There we go. Voice tracer and go there and save it. Again, it takes me through exactly the same as it did on the desktop. I get to say whether it's private or public. So just make that public. And I'm going to come down there into the tags and put in there made on Android. Made on Android. There we go. So you do not have to be left out of the party. And it's taken all my spaces out as well. You do not have to be left out of the party if you are on an Android device. Just use the website and it is very, very good. Very good. Uh, you can, of course, use the website on iOS if you would rather use that than use the app. Personally, I think the app has an advantage in that um, you're logged in all the time. I have had to pre-log in on here. Now, the benefit of Android is it will leave you logged in and it will save the password for you as well if you want. So um, just be aware of that. But we have another scheme up there before we move on to looking at actually using these color themes. So I'm going to lose my Android device. I've got all sorts of things here supporting uh, you seeing my device. So let's you lose all of those. And let's go and have a look at that pink ribbons, which was we had this. We had this Adobe uh, Swatch Exchange file. Now, as I've said, I have an application that previews those swatch files, which is why on my desktop I'm getting a preview of it. You may just see the icon. It depends on what applications you've got installed. But what I want to do with this is actually start to use it. So I'm going into Illustrator and in Illustrator there is a dedicated cooler panel. So this is what it looks like. And I've had this running in the background. And that is why these themes that I have created and favorited are appearing within Illustrator. So to show you actually using this, I'm going to create a new Illustrator file. That'll do nicely, just a file, any file will do. And oh, don't do that. Good grief. Now I've got more interface than we've got window. Right. There is the cooler theme. So you can see I've got Adobe Ideas. I've got uh, Andy Blue. I've got the cool one. Now you should be thinking about this and thinking, but pink ribbons wasn't Elaine's theme. No, it wasn't. And that's why we have different icons. Those different icons are indicating if it's a folder, it is a theme of mine. And if it's a heart, it's a theme that I favorited. And I can completely work with those. So I actually have um, a, a file here. Don't need to create a new one. Here's a file. So all I've got is a few shapes. And the reason that I've done that is to show you just how easy it is to use these themes from within Illustrator. So I've selected an object in Illustrator and I've got all my themes showing. And all I have to do there to use these is actually click on them. Don't have to download them, install them or do anything else. The way that Illustrator is set up, this panel is live and I can just use the colors the same way as I could use local colors. So over here, I have my swatches within Illustrator locally. What I've got in this cooler panel is my, all my cooler themes remotely. I haven't had to download them. Don't worry about keeping them in sync. They're live and they will update as I go. In fact, there is a button down the bottom here to refresh. So if I click on there, my Android one might appear. You never know. What it's doing is it's going up and it's querying cooler for themes that are, I have both created and themes that I have favorited. And uh, once it's synchronized itself, there we go. There's the top one, my voice tracer from Android. So if I go back in here, there's the very dark one and the navy one and all the colors of my desk. And yeah, the brown ones are my desk and the red one was the record button on it. So very, very simple to use your cooler schemes within Illustrator. Now, at the moment, you can't edit those themes from in here. So there is an edit button at the bottom, but it's just not active. Uh, maybe that's telling us what will be coming in the future. But that's what you've got in the cooler panel there. And you can see it's synchronizing that with my account. And that is shown in there as well. You can, if you want to, take these colors. So say that voice tracer one. What I can do with that is take that and add it to my swatches. When I do that, I get a whole extra folder 
in my swatches palette with the colours on from Cooler. And that way, doing it that way, when I save this file, those swatches are saved with it and they travel with that file. So if, my, if I inadvertently delete it from Cooler, not a problem, it's saved within the Illustrator file. So that's what Illustrator can do. So let's just save that file and lose Illustrator. So bye bye Illustrator. And now I'm going to show you what Photoshop can do. So I've got a Photoshop file. And it's thinking about opening it. There we go, just some colour spots in um, Photoshop there. So these are all on their own separate layer. And they are all over here. And I have a cooler palette in here as well, but very, very different because in Photoshop, it's an extension. So as I open that, it may or may not work. It loads them in and it's a very different extension. What I'd like to see is these two extensions merged together because this one allows you to do different things with it in terms of ratings and things like that that you can't do in Illustrator. But also in here, there are things in here you can do you can't do in Illustrator and things in Illustrator that you can't do in here. So just very, very strange the way it works. But in here, I can browse the highest rated, the most popular, the newest and all of that. I can look for mine. I can search. So very, very different. Now, if you have the swatches, so forget looking at Cooler remotely forget that exists. These are the swatches that are in my document at the moment and I would like to have those pinks available, the pink ribbons, then you can actually install them into Photoshop without using Cooler. And that's because it was on my desktop. So I move that to the side. There's the file I'm looking at using. And how I get that in there is go to my swatches and in here you can choose to load swatches. So when I click on there, it's pointing to my desktop. There is the Adobe Swatch Exchange file and I'm going to click open. So select the file, click open and it immediately adds them to the range of swatches that are available. And those swatches are the last five that it has added into my palette there. So with these selected, so let's choose that and click on there and I can fill that. Where's my fill option? There we go, that's my fill option. So choose another one and just keep going through it and doing that. So let's choose that one. Let's have that colour there. And are you going to fill that for me or not? Come on, you pick that up. You have, I think it's the same one, isn't it? Oh, going, going mad. But uh, there you go, you, you can fill it from there. Have you selected that? There we go. So very different in how they work and the swatches element works in a completely different way as well. Now, where you're going to have a problem with this, so coming out of Photoshop, not saving that, is if you use something that oh, isn't an Adobe product. And people do, believe it or not. So I'm thinking especially something like Pixelmator. Now, I did a whole video on how to get Pixelmator working with Adobe Swatch Exchange files, and I'm sure Mike will put the link for that in, in the uh, chat when he finds it. <laughs> That's put him on the spot. But I'm going to show you the trick of how you actually do that, because there are lots of applications where it would be great to have Cooler support, Cooler API support, but they just don't have it. So I'm thinking for my example, I'm going to look at Pages and I'm going to look at iBooks Author, but this is the same for Pixelmator and many, many other applications. The trick to making it work is another application called Color Schema Studio, which I'm a big fan of and I've mentioned before. But here's why it works so well in this, in, in this situation. This is an application that does nothing but handle colour schemes and it allows me to work with more than five colours. I can work with as many colours as I like and it's although it looks very simplistic, it just looks like a colour wheel and some colours, it's an immensely powerful application. I could talk about this for a couple of hours easy, but I won't. But what I am going to show you is that one of the things it can do is if you've got an application that doesn't support Adobe Swatch Exchange files, Color Schema Studio can act as a bridge between your swatch file and your application. And here's how it works. Just go to File and Import. And 
it tells you what kind of files it can import and one of them is the Adobe Swatch Exchange file. So that's what I want it to do. I want it to go and uh, I need to go and find that file. So on my desktop, my pink ribbons file and click open. And what that does is it loads in the swatches into the right hand panel. And from there, I can actually just work with them. So show you that. Let me get a file open. I'll start with the pages file. So I'm opening a pages file, which is very simple. It's a very simple file. It's just got some squares on it. It's a pages file with some squares on it. Not exciting, but I'm going to move this over here so we can work with it. Move that over there. Now, each of these squares has the same color fill on it in here. And no, I can't do anything in terms of getting that color into here. What this has got is what it's got, and that's that. But what I can do is open up this fill drop down and work with this instead at the bottom. So in here, same options, just choose, choose a color. That's still not going to work for me, but all will be revealed. So I've got a square selected. And all I need to do is to come over to here, click and drag and drag that across to there. And you can see as I hover over that, it gets a blue border or it would get a blue border. You will see the blue border. I need to do that after there. There we go. Blue border. And if I drop that, it fills the square. So it's as simple as that. All I need to do is drag and drop from Color Schema Studio to the interface of the receiving app and I'm done. So it's a way of integrating not just even one um, Adobe Swatch Exchange file. You can add into Color Schema Studio as many Swatch Exchange files as you like. So you just load them all in. I did have another one, didn't I? I had NWAG Blue. So uh, I'm going to put NWAG Blue on the desktop and I will load in NWAG Blue. So file uh, import, same as before. Yes, an Adobe Swatch Exchange file. Yes, it's on the desktop, NWAG Blue and open that up. And that shows you that you can now actually work with more than five colors and they're even handily grouped with their names as well to work with. And same principle in here, just choose the one you want and drag and drop it onto there. Now that's using something like pages. It works with pages, numbers, keynote, all of that. So I'm going to close that down and do something different with iBooks Author. So going into iBooks Author, and the reason that I've chosen iBooks Author is it has a totally different interface to the new versions of the iWork apps. So choosing the photo book template. But in principle, it remains the same. What's different in here is that I've got uh, this text. I've got body text down here. And as long as I've got this window up, which is the inspector, and I've got selected in here what I'm working with, I can do exactly the same. So choosing a blue and dragging it down to there changes the title. Selecting the body text and dragging and dropping a different blue changes that. And if I want to change that to a pink, I can do that as well. Just need to have that active, have what I want changing active and drag and drop. So it doesn't matter if it's text, whether it's titles, whether it's shapes, these applications will work with Color Schema Studio. And the good news is at the moment that it's on sale with 60% off. It's not a cheap application. I think it was originally when I first found it about $50, but it's reduced to £14 today. So at the moment it is reduced and it is available in the Mac App Store. So that is it for our demonstrations. Let's head off and wrap up. OK, so what are the practical uses for colour and uh, why is colour so important? Well, I've mentioned design. I've mentioned web design. Um, really, it's the consistency of design. And that's where the application integration comes in. The fact that I can take that single swatches file and use it in Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign. I can use it in Pages, Numbers, Keynote. It gives you consistency within your designs without the difficulty of dragging and dropping them and keeping images and trying to pick them up and make sure it's just the right shade. You've got that consistency right across the board. Um, I mainly use that sort of thing for presentations and every Every presentation that I have will have a style guide with it, which will have in the swatch file and it'll have an image of it. And I will be using exactly the right colours. And as you've seen, also really useful for things like iBooks. So consistency is the key. 
So I hope you found that useful and I hope you'll be with us next time when we're looking at Adobe Ideas. So um, this is uh, an iOS app and it's fantastic. Can highly recommend it. Lots of uses. One of the best I've seen has got to be Mike, who's been using it as a whiteboard, a digital whiteboard. So um, a great application and free of charge. So can't say fairer than that. That's the 13th of March. Same time, same place. 13th of March. And we've actually got a few more events coming up, too. In April, we'll be looking at Photoshop Text Magic. So if you would like to work some magic with text in Photoshop, that is the event for you. So the 17th of April. In May, we're looking at editing video in Photoshop. How many of you knew that Photoshop could actually edit video? And it does a really good job of it. Um, why would you want to edit video in Photoshop is a question I hear a lot. Because all the smart objects, the colour scheme, everything that you can do in Photoshop, you can do to video. So if you've got some fantastic filters and styles and effects, not only can you put them on your photos, but you can put them on your video as well. So uh, 13th of May. And then in June, we're looking at Photoshop brushes. So um, a really useful feature that not many people deep dive, but um, we'll be deep diving it 19th of June. So I hope you will join us for at least one of those events. And just to remind you, I have been Elaine Giles. You can find me all over the internet as Elaine Giles, but specifically my blog, elainegiles.co.uk. And I'm on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Google Plus and YouTube. So um, some new videos coming shortly. So thank you very much for attending. We're going to head off into Q&A. And if you are with us on YouTube, I will bid you a fond farewell. And uh, hopefully I'll hear from you about what you're using Cooler for and uh, what you'd like to use Cooler for. But until next time, it is goodbye from me. And that's fantastic. I can see it. Can you see it? I can see Marvellous. Hello, good evening and welcome everybody. And tonight we're looking at Cooler Colour.